We've traditionally been representing differential equations with what we call input-output form, where we write things as an nth order differential equation with the inputs on the right and the outputs on the left. Another form uh, that's used quite often, especially with computers, is what's called state variable or state space form. And that's especially uh, useful for computers, which work very well with first order equations where instead of one nth order equation, we have n first order equations. Some examples include physics engines used in computer games, climate change models, financial modeling, and computational fluid dynamics. The reason why state variable form is used so much is because it's very convenient to set up, program, and analyze. And that's true even if n is very large. So even on a desktop computer today, uh, having 100,000 uh, equations being solved simultaneously is quite typical. Another thing to know about state variable form is that if you have a linear constant coefficient equation, such as the kind that we've dealt with almost uh, every day, that you can use matrices to represent them. Let's be a little bit more specific. Here we're going to use the letter Z to denote our state variables, and there are going to be N of them, so we're going to number them 1, 2, all the way through N. And then our goal is to write one differential equation for each state. And the idea is that each equation is going to be in this form. We're going to list all of our states, and we're going to find the state derivative for each one as a function of all the states and the input. And all of these are going to have a similar form, although the actual specifics of the function is going to differ. This is a little bit abstract, so let's do an example. Here's a mass damper system, which we've already encountered. In fact, you've already run a simulation of the mass damper. And here, uh, it's very straightforward. We just defined our state variable, z, as being the same as the velocity, v. And uh, just to be clear what we mean with, with our definitions, I'm going to use this little triangle on top of the equal sign to stand for a definition. So we're defining state variable z to mean v. Similarly, there's an input to this system, and the input is actually going to be our force F. And so we need to write Z dot, or now there's V dot, in terms of the uh, other states. There's only one state, which is actually going to be V. So we have negative B over M multiplied by V, which in this case is Z plus 1 times U. So notice that we have an equation that's in terms of our states, and it solves for the state derivative on the left, and all of the states and the input are given on the right. So there's our state variable form for the uh, mass damper equation. This is also a time that we can mention the more generic matrix form, where in the matrix form, we like to say z dot is equal to a times z plus b times u, where these are both going to be matrices. Now, in this case, these matrices are not very interesting because capital A is just the value negative b over m, and capital B is just equal to 1. But nevertheless, in general, for our state space equations, we can write them in forms of matrices. That equation was not all that challenging because we already had the input-output differential equation which uh, makes it easy to find the states. And also, you know that an nth order differential equation can be broken down into n first order differential equations with n states. But more generally, if we just are looking at a system, we may be wondering how many states there are and what to define them with. Here's one method to do that. Uh, it's quite easy, which is to examine the energy storing variables. Here we have a spring with a potential energy given by 1 half kx squared. and the x there is the energy storing variable, which we could use to define a state. For a mechanical mass, a, the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and so v could be the energy storing state, could be the energy storing variable to be used as a state. For electrical systems, the magnetic field is just going to be 1 half li squared, and so i would be the energy storing variable for that system. And for an electric uh, field from a capacitor, we would use V because the field's strength is 1 half CV squared. For a fluid system, the potential energy is 1 half CP squared, where P would be the energy storing variable, 
for a fluid inertance, it would be one half I times Q squared, where Q is referring to the flow rate through the uh, pipe. Finally, for thermal systems, there's only one energy storing variable. And in fact, temperature, T, is already a form of kinetic energy. And so that could be treated as an energy storing variable. Here are some other examples where we're just going to count the uh, states and define them. So here we have two masses and two springs. So that's going to give us four energy storing elements. And we would choose state variables as the velocities of the two masses and the deflections of the two springs. For this rotational system, it's actually a little bit trickier because uh, theta zero is actually dependent on theta one. And so we're not actually going to treat it as a unique equation. So we're not going to use theta zero as a state variable. And instead, we have two rotational masses and we have one rotational spring. So this is going to give us three states. And we would define those states as uh, the angular velocity of the two masses and then the angular displacement of the uh, torsional spring. Here, we just have two temperatures. And so those are going to be our two state variables. And then for this fluid system, the state variables are going to be the uh, two pressures for the two capacitances. And so we have one and two. So this would be uh, give us two first order state derivative equations. Let's just summarize what we've talked about so far. We said that instead of writing our input output form, which is a uh, nth order first uh, differential equation, we're going to write our state variable form in terms of n first order differential equations because those are very useful to work with for computers. And we talked about one way to define states, and I should say that this is not the only way, this is just one convenient way, is to use uh, z for our state variables and to define one z per energy storing variable in our system. And then we need to write one state derivative equation for each z. And we also mentioned there's a matrix form where this is a vector of z's, and these a and b would be matrices. And this works for any linear constant coefficient equation, which is the form that we've been dealing with all along. And then we didn't really talk about it, but I'll just mention it here, which is uh, we often define an output variable of interest. And that also can be written as a matrix multiplied by our uh, state variable vector and our input u.